Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Hannah. Today we're going to talk about how to make pick guards. Maybe even a very psychedelic pick guard. Mm -hmm. Before we get going talking about how to make a pick guard, we want to talk about some admin notes first. Number one, if you haven't been following this series, this is a 15 part series and we're on part 10 today. And the thing is, if you haven't seen the other episodes, they should. You should. You should click in the link in the description below yeah. and go to the YouTube playlist and they're all listed and there. And they'll all be listed and you can go catch up with what you missed in the series. Now I will tell you if you're starting from the beginning and you're gonna go and use this video series to build a Strat style guitar along with us, you will want our notes. I talk about this in every episode. This is a, a package, a digital package that we will email you if you request, again, click in the link below, um, this, these documents. These documents kind of go over the parts list, it goes over the order of operations and the sequence and timing of those operations and a little outline uh, packet that allows you to take notes as you go so that the next one that you build, you've got it right there. Yep, a lot All of right? good information. Exactly, and you're gonna to wanna to request these from us. Click in the link below for that. We started this series by making the neck and doing all what's involved in the neck, and then we followed it up with a body. So we've got this two-piece alder body with a top loading and swimming pool cavity, and it's super lightweight. It's just a really nice piece. Yeah, and we, we are gonna add some extra flair to this build when we get to the section of painting, because I think we've got some ideas for the kind of paint we want to use. Yep. yep, stay tuned for that in future episodes. We've been thinking of an opaque, super neat finish for this guy. Yeah, yeah you're gonna want to see that. Yep. And that's where we kind of started the whole series, but we added a second Strat style guitar to the process later on, uh, because I wanted to also demonstrate how we do not only the top loading style, but also a rear cavity style. And if you don't remember or hadn't been seen, you want to go check back how we did this. But this is a super fractured um, cleral walnut top that has this incredible character. But what we showed is how to use even wood that you think is not worthy of a guitar and make it worthy of a guitar. Yep. What do you think of that? It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. It reminds and, me of those Japanese pottery where it's cracked and they fill it with gold. Oh, whenever I started doing this, what it reminded me of is like having like granite rocks with like mm. gold veins in it and stuff yeah. like that, you know? It's using those imperfections to make it beautiful. Exactly. And we're not done with this, but I did add a little bit of a burst finish to begin to set it up. Um, and we're going to do more bursting in the back, but we got something special to show you along with the pick guard. We're going to show you how to do a, a rear cavity cover on this one to kind of go along with the pick guard. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. about that. Yeah. So and that's where we went. We've got a neck for this one that happens to also be Claro Walnut with a Wenge top and some of the same um, gold foil epoxy. Uh, fills in the dots so it kind of matches perfect with that. We've already got a pickup set that we're going to be using for that but we're going to be doing something tricky in a future episode too with those. we got exciting plans ahead. Yeah. As one last side note, when we are finished completely with this series and these guitars are 100% done, they will be offered up for sale. Neither of them are spoken for at this point in time and I will tell you they're going to be offered first to our Patreon supporters. And after they have an opportunity, it will go to people who that are subscribed to our website. So if you haven't subscribed to our website, all you got to do. Click the link in the description below. Go to the website. You'll have a pop-up window that'll ask you if you want to stay in touch, you know, and have uh, early access to information in the future that you should fill that in there. Which you definitely do. Yes. You want to know. So Hannah, why would somebody want to build their own pick guard rather than buying one, you know, from the internet? Because it's a lot harder. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we like doing things that we are like harder. We like doing it the hard way. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, it's it gives you a lot of uh, creative freedom. Sure. Not only with 
what material you use, but mm -hmm. also with configuration of uh, your pickups. Yeah. Yeah, so like the swimming pool route here, that's the reason that we did that is to have that maximum, maximum, did you get that? Oh, <laughs> uh, um, nice one. <laughs> yeah, Flex, flexibility, right? So we didn't have to determine in the beginning what kind of pickup configuration. What if we don't want the standard Strat triple single coil pickups? Yep. Okay, and we wanted something maybe a little different. So like these super rad Righteous Sound Gold, Gold tooth, tooth series. Yeah, yeah, these are gonna be awesome in there. So we're gonna do a double humbucker configuration in the swimming pool route of the alder body. And I think that's gonna show everybody the versatility of that type of route. So like the swimming pool route, we do have a two piece template set available on the website um, that routes the big portion first, all right, and then with the alignment pin system that we use, which have already been lopped off at this point in time, but we would go back and we would lock it into the exact same position and with a half inch bushing guide and a quarter inch router bit, these are spaced perfectly to make those routes for, yeah, the little legs to fit in and have room for the, the mounting screws to go in there. It's a perfect system. It is, absolutely. When we talk about pick our material, it's really an enormous array of materials that are available that you can use. And so we'll talk about some of the standard ones right here first. And, and that is your standard like ABS plastic style sheets that you buy that are pre-cut to a pick guard shape and size for basically a strat. And it'll cover other sizes. And if you're getting tellies, maybe you can get two of them out of here or something like that. Uh, but we're talking about strats today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so these are standard. You got off white, there's white, there's cream, there's the mint. Uh, they even have a little fancier one that have the kind of the pearl, which I think is gorgeous. It's a, it's a pearl with a black and then a solid white on the back of it. And so that really kind of is the, what do we call that? The tuxedo effect? Ooh, yeah. I think that yeah. you, you refer to it as. <laughs> um, just kind of dressing up a guitar a little bit, but there's other things we can do too. Ooh, like acrylic. Mm. There's a wide range of... Uh, colors. Yeah, colors, designs. designs. This is like a pearl here. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of see it's, 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 it's not quite the same as this, but it's a synthetic, uh, an, a, an acrylic version of that that is yeah. pretty sharp and you can get all sorts of colors yeah i feel like something like this really sets your guitar apart yeah because it's just not gonna be your boring pick art that you can get from the store you can really customize it to yeah. fit your needs yeah and we may or may not be using this actual material on that guitar stay tuned so, to yeah, find out we'll see <laughs> it's gonna look good you also oh. have Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is one of my favorites yeah. uh, because it adds a modern edge to a very classic guitar. It gives kind of an industrial look to it. It does. Yeah. I but like it. There are some safety concerns there are. that you need to keep in mind when working with carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. So dust. Dust is, is a big one. Yep. You don't want to breathe in carbon dust. You don't want to breathe in any of it because it's a cum cumulative did I get that right? Cumulative. It's a cumulative <laughs> effect over time. And, yeah. and it's just not, not good to do that. Mm -mm. You don't want to breathe in any dust, but Minimize. if you're stubborn. Like me. And don't use the proper respiratory I do on protection. This. Make sure for sure you I'm use stubborn. It I'm just not stupid. Yeah. Something Sometimes. else to keep in mind is when working with this, you will pretty much destroy your bits. So there's a special bit we've got here. Yep which is an abrasive uh, pattern bit. This is a unique yeah. thing. And uh, I picked this up, I believe, off of uh, Tools Today, which mm -hmm. is the Amana distributor, basically, of, of their bits. And diamond abrasive is really the only way to cut carbon fiber with a tool that the tool's not gonna be ruined after the first use. Yep, let's it'll give, last you a little bit longer. Let's give everybody a close-up of that bit so they can see what it's all about. So as you can see, the diamond abrasive just etches away um, all of that carbon fiber in a very nice manner. And that bearing on it allows you 
to just track the template ever so perfect and get some amazing, amazing carbon fiber pick guard material. Another material would be metals. Yeah. Aluminum, brass. Yeah. Any pretty much any non-ferrous type metal, which means it doesn't have iron in it. Uh, you don't want a steel pick guard, even though it would look pretty it cool. It would look so cool. It might mess up the magnetic field a little bit. Maybe. But the non-ferrous metals are good for that. Aluminum's nice. Mm -hmm. And something to keep in mind when cutting these out is to use a single flute yeah. pattern bit. Yeah. It, the standard bits that we use for our plastic are, are a double flute like this one here, uh, pattern bit. And the problem with the double flute is it will take the aluminum and it'll kind of start melting and jamming up in here. It'll and all of a sudden, clogged. yeah, you don't have a cutting edge anymore. Yep. Right. So, so definitely recommend that you seek out a single flute pattern bit when you're working with the non-ferrous metals. Yep. Now you had a video. I did. Yeah. I did. About. In fact, let's, uh, let's link that below. Yeah. And I did a video on a little jig apparatus that I built to do perfect linear scratching for that brushed aluminum effect. Another thing to add in addition to using your single flute um, when using uh, aluminum or brass is a uh, using a bit of WD-40. Mm -hmm. It'll help lubricate those chips and they will get out of your way easier. Yeah, and that's what you want. That's the hardest thing with, with working with the metals is, is when they, they, the chips don't yeah. you know, uh, get out of the way. They don't want to cooperate. Yeah. So another thing that we're going to show is you can make pick guards also out of laminating wood together. All right, and this creates a pretty interesting appeal for certain guitars too, depending upon, you know, the exotic woods that you have, maybe some cool flame or quilt or something like that. Um, but the important thing is, I don't generally recommend you use just one piece of wood when you're making those pick It's guards. not very stable. Yeah. And because, depending upon how the grain is running, if it's a vertical grain in there, it's, it's also going to be pretty fragile yep. too. So what's the best way to handle that? We're going to laminate that wood in a plywood style. Yeah. So you're going to want uh, your grains to, to cross yep. perpendicular to each other. Yep. But something to keep in mind, your top and your bottom piece of whatever, your thin veneer, yeah. or it needs to be oriented in the same way. It needs right. to sandwich it. Because whatever you do the, to the top, you're going to want to do to the bottom. Right. Or else it's going to warp on you. It's just not going to be yep. stable. And and, be, and because of that, you're going to have an odd number of layers when, when you do this, right? Because you could have a three layer, you could have a five layer. But again, it has to be stacked in a uniform way to have equal tension applied so it kind of remains flat. And we're going to actually show you today how to do that process, but I don't really need it for a pick guard. I'm going to use this, which is a slice of our environmental series, <laughs> a body wood that we used here. Um, and I sliced it off before I built this guitar because I, because I was adding a clear walnut top, I didn't need the full thickness. So by slicing that off first, after drilling the alignment pin holes, we are going to be able to construct a rear cavity cover that perfectly fits and blends with the wood um, laminated pieces there. And we're going to be able to do it with accuracy. And, and I have done some finishing to this guitar, basically a seal coat and a little bit of tint around the edge. But I'm going to do even more burst around this edge after we get this built so that, so that we can get that burst exactly going across the pick the uh the cover area and it's and gonna the, blend right and the in. tinting will be the same from the back to that it's gonna be so classy it is gonna be classy it's gonna kind of disappear my goal with that to make the back almost like disappear that way is to project more of the focus onto the front of the guitar because of how cool this gold veining is yeah yeah send us some comments of the material that you like to use on your guitars Cool. That'd be good to see. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about the prep for making our uh, fancy pick card. I am so excited about it. All righty. So first step is going to be to trace this handy dandy template. 
Yeah, and we do have templates for almost every pickup configuration imaginable. Yep. Um, if there's something that we don't have that somebody would want, click on the link below to email us and just start the dialogue. More than likely, we can help you out with something that's different from what we currently have on the website. Yep. So to start, we're just going to trace around this template and we're also going to trace in the cavities because our next step is going to be to rough cut this on the bandsaw mm -hmm. and then take it to the drill press and drrill holes in here in order to fit the bit yeah. when we flush cut yep, this on the router. The holes. Yep. What you use to trace is going to depend on material. Yeah. So if you're using a black plastic, a pencil is going to be kind of hard to see. You mm -hmm. might want to use a welder's pencil. Yep, that's um, silver and that stands out a little bit more. Yep. yep. For this, we're just going to use a Sharpie. Yep. On the acrylic, it's just not, a pencil wouldn't show. Yeah. So a Sharpie is the best thing. Don't worry about getting little black marks on the side of your templates. Okay, mm -hmm. they they are designed to be used. They scratch. They'll, they'll get little black marks on them, but don't worry about it, you know, because it's doing what it was designed to do. Yep. And really the thickness of the Sharpie doesn't matter because we're going to be bandsawing this. Outside, outside of the line yeah, right so what do you say bandsaw first or drill press first bandsaw okay we'll see you over there Ta-da! There we go. All done. Yeah, slap it on there. <laughs> Ta-da! Sharpie and all. <laughs> all right, so our next step is going to be to use double sticky tape and tape this guy to here so that we can take it to the router table and flush cut it. Mm -hmm. Now, we could put this on the top here. That would not be good. It would not be good, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be um, an extra step down the line because we are going to bevel this edge here on the top and if we stick this to the top we could easily route it flush but then we're going to have to take this guy off and then put it on the back in order to get that chamfer right and so we're just going to take out that extra step and start and you'll never you'll never get back. it back in the exact same position anyway yeah. so no, it's just it, a pain do it right the first time and that's yep. exactly how you do it. We'll stick it to the back. Stick it to the man. Stick it to the man. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always a good philosophy. It's always yeah. a good <laughs> words of wisdom. <laughs> All right, while Hannah is applying that tape, let me point out a couple things about the double stick tape. There's, there's a lot of different tape that's available out there. The two primarily that I use uh, is this type of tape, which has more of like a carpet take tape. It's a thicker and there's a slight sponginess to that tape. And I use it during certain applications of our template systems that have alignment pins because I don't worry about the side to side movement and it sticks vertically a whole lot better. This is almost like masking tape that happens to be double sided. It's thinner. There's no sponginess to it. There's a little less tackiness. But for a pick guard that doesn't have any alignment pins, it's a much better way to secure it to this because it doesn't have any of that twisting motion to it. Yep. Now just make sure as you're sticking it down that you have some of the plastic material visible all around the perimeter, right? Because if you cross that line, then you're not going to have a perfectly smooth edge and you'll have to do something we call a design change <laughs> and take it to the oscillating spindle sander or whatever yep. and you'll have to get that out. And then you just pretend that that was the plan all, all along. along. Alrighty, so we're stuck on there good. We're going to take it to the router table, right? And we're going to flush cut and we're going to do the bevel in the key areas that require a bevel. Ooh, right? yes. That's a good thing to talk about. Yes. One thing to keep in mind you're not going to want to bevel where the neckline's up here and down here and where the bridge by is. the bridge. Yeah, 
you, you want to only bevel the other edges. And this is a solid material, right, as opposed to a three-ply material. Um, bevels are done on multi-ply pickguard materials, but it doesn't mean we can't do it on a solid material, right? Right. And it can add a little bit of extra comfort, especially the acrylic that can be sharper if it's got a 90-degree edge. I like to add that in there for the comfort. Unless you're super metal and you're just hoping to bleed. You bleed as all over the guitar. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, it could be a design choice. And more you likely you don't have a pink pick art if you're doing that. I, I'm <laughs> hey, not sure. Hey, hey, I not, don't know about that. Not judging. <laughs> cool. Let's Can do I? it. Beautiful. All right, we're going to start off with a close-up here. This is the back side of the pick guard. We drilled and routed and beveled the front edge of everything. But there's this one weird slot here. And it's like, man, my pickup selector switch isn't that wide. <laughs> um, so that's designed for a very specific reason. What we're going to use is we're going to use a handheld router and a 16th inch bit and a 5 8 correction, a 5 16 inch bushing guide right there. And what's going to happen is that's going to drop into that slot and allow us to slide back and forth while plunging that 16 inch bit down into the acrylic until we get all the way through this approximately uh, eighth inch thick piece of acrylic. And that's kind of the special feature of our template systems, the pick guard uh, with a blade switch like, like this strat style, is this is, I guarantee, going to be the easiest way that you will ever do one of those blade slots. All right, Hannah, now we're going to do the slot for the blade switch. And this is not that difficult, but it really becomes pretty handy the way we can do it with a router. Like most routing operations, when depth is important, then you want to take and drop the bit all the way onto the material you're going to be routing. And then all, I would say most routers have some sort of depth stop gauge on this one. I just kind of pull up for the depth and we are going to go an eighth of an inch. It will be about three point something millimeters for this fest tool. I'm just going to go about four four and a half and then I'll sure I get all the way through it into this spoil board as it were. All right. So now that we've got that locked into place, this thing will only plunge to the depth that we need, but I don't have to worry so much about destroying my template by hitting it with the router bit when I've got the bushing guide. And so any narrow slot is always better to be done with a guide rather than a flush cut bearing for that reason. All right. We're going to have to run it one more time because all the acrylic dust um, in here kind of gets in the way and it may block the bushing guide from getting full travel. So I'll just clean that out and I'll touch it one last time at full depth and that should be good. All right. Now let's take this off of the template and we'll ease it off so that we don't break it in half. <laughs> acrylic, one of the things about acrylic, it is a, it is more brittle than ABS plastic would be. And so therefore it is easy to break if you try to lift it up too quickly. So just give it a chance for that tape to give up. That's what I call it. You just be patient 
okay. and you let the tape give up. You got to win. You got to beat that tape. <laughs> All right. So gorgeous. we went plenty deep enough. Or just what? I said gorgeous. Oh, it is gorgeous. <laughs> it is. Got a little bit of Sharpie on there. That'll come off uh, with a little bit of polish. But now we are looking at something here instead of a conventional look. Uh, we are going to have something that is ultra, ultra crazy. Yeah. What was the word you used earlier? Psychedelic. Psychedelic. Yeah. Reminds me of flamboyant, but yeah. I don't know. Could Both be slightly good words. interchangeable. Right there. Yeah, that's going to look good. Yeah. And that's against a, an alder background. When when we get this painted up, you're going to... You're going to see it's going to just kind of blow your mind. So that was the last little feature. We did do the bevels in the top of the screw holes. We don't do them for the pickup holes. We don't do them for the, um, the switch um, mounting holes. Some switches have an undercut to, this, to the screw and some do not. So I generally don't do it until I go to install. And then if I need to, I can just take a little hand countersink and countersink it ever so slightly. Yep. Uh, but that's that's all we're doing, and that's beautiful. So we're going to get set up, and then we're going to show you the last thing, which is talking about the laminated wood style of pick guard that we're going to use for our cover plate. All right, last thing we're going to show you in the realm of pick guards, but it's doing the control cavity cover on our environmental series fractured, filled, beautiful, Clara walnut top. Um, we're going to make this match. And we talked about a little bit in the earlier discussions, but here's, here's how it goes down. So I sliced this off, right? It had the alignment pins and those locations in place. You have to make sure you keep your orientation. If you do any of this type of stuff where you slice a layer off um, to reuse it for a cover plate, you have to make sure the orientation stays the same. So I drill those holes at the same time it's still connected to the block of wood. That way I can't confuse it and get it backwards, right? And so this is how it came off and this is how it's gonna set back in and that'll be perfect alignment. So we simply take our template and the alignment pins of the template, it doesn't really matter. Um, forget that, it doesn't matter. Everything matters. Um, <laughs> which template you have is what I was going to say, because it does matter. Cause see, this is the outside um, cut of the cover. So we have to make sure we take that into account. Do you have a sharp pencil over there? A mechanical pencil. You do have a mechanical pencil. Look at that. That is sharp. That's as sharp as it gets. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to trace this out. And the secret is, is we are going to cut outside of this line. Okay, we, we want to identify the line and we want to keep that identified because that's always going to tell us what's face up. And the other side, we're going to laminate the other layers to. And Hannah's going to show us how we do that. Um, and I'm going to need that in a second again because the next thing that I'm going to do is we talked about having it in three pieces. Well, we cut ourselves a piece of cross grain maple right there. And it's okay that there's a little crack in there. The glue will all solidify that. But that's why we're cross, crossing the grain is for mm -hmm. that strength. But I'm just going to use as the extra piece of wood, I'm going to use a portion of this other side um, that's not necessarily grain matched. And it doesn't really matter. But if I flip it over, or your pencil. <laughs> um, any one of them pockets. Yep. And... Um, and what we're going to do is cut out both of these and use this as the chocolate portion of our Oreo. There you go. Good analogy. Thank you. <laughs> um, and Which is actually super smart because by cutting it out of the same material, it's the same thickness, it's mm -hmm. the same species. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to have that same movement. Exactly. The so it's not going to warp and change on you. Right. It's going to be pretty constant. Um, the stressors of the wood are, should be opposing Similar. and opposite of yep. each other, right? And then if we have to make the overall sandwich a little thinner to fit in our cavity, we could take a little off of each side at that point and again, yep. keep keep that uh, constant, you know, in any type of movement that would want to happen, right? Yep. 
All right, so now I'm just gonna go to the bandsaw real quick. We're not gonna film this, but I'm gonna cut these, these two out. And then Hannah's going to then sandwich in that piece of maple veneer to give us that thickness that we need for this, but also the structural integrity of the cross grain. Yep. All right, so we just cut this out on the bandsaw real quick. We've got an upside, we've got a downside. We labeled both of those just to make sure we don't get confused during the process because this has got to be perfect and we only have one shot at getting this correct. Yep. So Hannah is going to show us how we laminate this and use the cross grain. So take it away. Alrighty. One nice thing about labeling it is these are the two sides that don't receive any glue. That's right. Which when laminating, uh, I had an instructor that said you take out the human element and that helps uh, reduce, minimize, minimize yeah. Yeah, mistakes. Yeah. So by yep. it might not seem like much just to label, but you can never mm -hmm. label too much. Yeah, and I, I, I take the human element out of everything I do. Yep. Yeah, I'm a machine. <laughs> yep. So this Alrighty. could get pretty noisy, so. We'll see. Yep, yep, hearing protection. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> Alrighty, just got some Type Bond 1. Yeah, right? original yep. Type Bond. Standard stuff works great for most everything. Yep. And this very high-end glue roller. Yeah, I you know I've got several different sizes of this, but it's it's kind of an ink I don't know stamping roller or something okay. in that vein that you can find Amazon and other places. And I find it really nice to be able to just to kind of roll that, and you'll get the consistent pattern um, of original tight bond should be full coverage but slightly translucent, okay? And what that means is we'll still be able to see the grain uh, through there, but yep. but it's gonna definitely have full coverage, and that's what we're looking to do. And if you're like me, you can never gauge how much glue is too much. <laughs> so you just, uh, both sides? Both sides on the middle piece, yep. You got some parchment paper to kind of help with the mess. Yeah. And I'll talk about the calls while she's doing that. Uh, we made up just a couple quarter inch calls so that we can clamp this together. We could also throw it into our vacuum press, but not everybody has one of those. So um, so this is kind of a good way to do it. If you've got some quick rip clamps or any style clamps, you know, maybe six or eight or something like that. Um, but this is, this is melamine um, and melamine has that protective coating on it that prevents I wouldn't say prevent, but dramatically reduces the ability of glue to stick to it. If you don't have that and you're just using some scrap pieces of plywood and such, I would recommend this parchment paper or wax paper or something in between the calls and your plate so that you don't glue the plate <laughs> to the call. Okay, that would be another fatal error. Yep. Yeah. It'd probably be too late before you found out. Yep. So that's what we're going to use so we can avoid the wax paper, but, but wax paper certainly is a good way to go. Yep. When I cut it out, I left about at least an eighth, but more likely closer to a quarter inch all around the edge. So we don't have to necessarily get it perfectly aligned front and back. Uh, the key thing is the front side and the lines that we drew is where we're going to match the template up after this glue dries. Yep. Alrighty. Try to hold that for this, you. Yeah, two man job here. Let's see here. You got these nice long ones yeah. to reach in the middle. Okay, this has shifted a little bit. So is it? Yeah, see what your side looks like. Oh, no, mine is too. Once we get That's a little good. more pressure on it, it'll, it'll yep. stay. You just got to keep an eye on it until yep. the slippery part. That is a trick I didn't think of till this. A little bit of salt mm -hmm. will keep those from, from skating. Sliding. Yeah. That is weird, but it does, it does work. Yep. All righty. Ain't going nowhere now. Nope. Have you heard the saying? How many clamps do, does a woodworker need? All of them.
One more than he has. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. All right, so now we finished the glue up of the three laminated pieces. We got a veneer in the center. We got two of these environmental uh, wood slices on the front and back. We got them labeled up and down so we know which is which. Now Hannah's going to take us through attaching our template that comes with our complete template kits that allow for the routing out of this channel. And that is the template that came right out of this template in order to make the cover for the area you just routed out with the other template system. Right. So Hannah's going to show us how we go ahead and attach that and we're going to get that done and show you the final fit. Alrighty. So we're going to want to have our upside that we so carefully labeled. Yeah. Don't want to mess that one up. Nope. We, got, we got one shot at this. Yep. And then we also have these lines that were transferred that lined up with our uh, alignment pin Oh, from the yeah, outside yeah, yeah, exactly. so that this is mm -hmm. that exact spot here exact spot and this... so it's important to line this thing up with those lines yeah because if it's off a little bit you're going to be able you're to tell. see it and you know what that means if we can see it because we're off we're going to do a bigger burst that's right <laughs> that's the answer to that is everything true. everything's fixable that's right with a bigger burst <laughs> all righty so I'm going to make sure I don't put that tape over that line because I want to be able to see through that template where I'm lining it up. I think I will use your technique. Yep. I'll just have to grow out my fingernails longer. <laughs> mm. But that would drive me nuts. I would not like that. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to do what we do with long fingernails. Yep. Yeah. I've tried. <laughs> Got those acrylics on. Yeah. <laughs> Everything I touch. <laughs> click, click. It, it's fun when you're on the keyboard. <laughs> click, click, click. Oh, come on, you. All righty. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm right over on top of it. Yeah, I mean, the trick is to go slow and look at all sides as you're lowering it before you commit to locking it into that tape and yep. get it as perfect as you possibly can. Yep. Steve's, Steve has a technique where he puts little dowels underneath and rolls them out. I'm going to use part of that technique and just kind of lift Start one side one up. Side, yep. And then, ever so carefully, lower that down. One final safety measure with this tape is to put some pressure on it, and that will just help that stick more. Yeah, bond better, yeah. And so, you can do that with this vise. Worst thing is when you you got a one-of-a-kind piece of wood that you're going to be putting on there, and that template you thought was double stick taped down perfectly and it shifts as you're pushing into the router bit, that's not for yeah. a good day. And we've put nope. too much work into this. Yeah. We want to have a good end of the day. Yes. So let's go to the router table and uh, flush cut this. All right, so now we just completed all the steps. We laminated, we glued up, we took it, we routed it, we drilled the holes, and you saw at the end, we actually ran it through the little drum sander to take equal sides off just enough to get it to the thickness that we want to. Yep. And I think we're in pretty good position right now. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Let's Moment look. of truth. Yeah, let's try it out. Boom. Ooh, look at how that lines up. Yeah. That looks nice. That's dead perfect. Yep. And this is kind of a classy touch that you can add to a lot of these rear cavity type guitars. If you have the ability to slice your piece of wood off of here and then match it up like that with, you know, the way that our template systems work, yeah. then it can look really good. Um, so that's a good thing. I, I, 
I think in general, though, we're going to add some finish to this. We're going to do a burst around there and then maybe an overall slight tinting just a little bit darker than it is. And because of that, uh, we want to have a little extra clearance in this slot. Room for that finish. Yeah, so we can we can sand that by hand to create the amount. And what Hannah is going to show here. So we're just going to take off. We're going to want to do it equally all around and kind of at a slight angle towards the back of this. So it's kind of funneling into yeah. place, sure. Maybe a little bit more? Sure, see a little bit more. Does it pop out easily? Ooh, close. Yeah, let's try to dump it. Nice. That's getting there. <laughs> yep. Okay, when you can actually dump it out, um, that's, that's a good sign. But again, we're just gonna allow for a little extra room because of the finish that's going to be applied. We're kind of anticipating that. But we're getting really close. Any type of power sander would be too aggressive for this process. It's really best uh, just to do it by hand with a piece of sandpaper or maybe even a little block, you know, like this. Some something that you can work at delicately. Alrighty. I think that's that good. That looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It looks good. It feels good. It'll probably dump out real easy. Yep. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. So this is, this is going to be an amazing guitar. Um, the beauty of, of this wood combined with the beauty of that wood are just all around. It's, and the neck that we have for it, you know, the Clara Walnut neck, you know, with the Wayne Gay fretboard, that's going to really tie in once we get a finish on this. It's going to be good it's, looking. It's, yeah, it's going to be great. So excited about that. Me too. All right, you guys probably didn't know how much there was to learn about doing pick guards. And, and it was kind of in-depth, and hopefully you enjoyed that. But we covered the entire process of materials and how to cut it out and different techniques. And we, as a bonus, we certainly threw in there the ability to do the matched cover plates on, out of wood on something like this tremendous-looking guitar. So yeah. that's, that was a pretty busy day. It was, but make sure you join us next time mm -hmm. for part 11. Yep. So it's going to be a very exciting day of uh -huh. dry fitting all of our parts. In. Yeah, make sure everything fits just perfect. Yep. And we're also going to, what are we going to get set, set up? the bridge location, mm -hmm. the neck location. And the pickups. Yep. And make sure everything is dead perfect before we go on to finishing the finishing process. And then that is, is something that leads into the final assembly, which then gets into another couple episodes of the final setup and tweaking and nut making and all that other stuff. But it's But we're getting close. We are. We are getting close on this. And so. they're looking pretty fancy. Yep. Yeah, I love it. So make sure you don't miss our next episodes and subscribe. Yeah. And click the bell. Click the bell. Yep. Get notified. All that fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. And remember, until next time, no matter what you do. Start with excellence.